in terms of what we've already inferred from other places that you know these tributaries probably have ice while the lake is open down the valley and so that's probably just another part of that that story so if we were in the thompson valley so we're down here if we were in the other lake system one of the other lake system the one that runs east west up to here and to uh, ashcroft and cash creek you we would have taken an hour to drive north to a place called wait for the truck to go by a place called the chasm and the chasm is interesting for a bunch of reasons first you drive north and you actually really really see the edge of the chalcotin basalts okay so the chasm is a great big zone of erosion into the chalcotin basalt so this is the region north of the lake basins lake basins are down here we follow a valley north and this this valley there's a town called clinton um, but this is the edge of the chilcotin basalt and you drive on to the top of the basalt plateau and the edge of, a, of the basalt plateau is cut by the chasm and in fact there's three little chasms there's a big one and two smaller ones but there are major incisions right into the edge of the the basalt there's nothing in it now like it, there's a tiny little trickle stream that goes into it it's, it's basically a dry a dry system um, here's what it looks like I made many of these you can have them or you can pass them around or there's maybe I got a couple these this is the chasm okay so this is a four or five kilometer long incision this surface is all basalt and uh, this is the valley that runs so we get our bearings here this valley like this is this one here like that this is one incision this is the other this is the other the three that are here with the lidar I've played around to try to display different aspects of it what's really fascinating about this first of all it's the incision itself so we're looking at uh, probably about 200 meters at least of relief from the bottom to the top so it's a deep deep gorge cut there it's dry today there's no stream going into it in or out of it um, tiny tiny one because it's cut in columnar jointed basalt it looks an awful lot like what you see in the channel scab lens so the channel scab lens you saw the video that has Nick in it gives you a good overview that's why I picked it because it gives you an idea of the landscape what the landscape looks like it's a really unique landscape and a big reason why it looks the way it does is because the basalt's so jointed so it makes erosion relatively easy but it also produces these very steep vertical walls just because you've got that columnar jointing that kind of conditions that pattern of erosion what's equally interesting about the chasm is what's upflow of the chasm and on this dm and also on this one so on this DEM, the chasm is really just the just right here. So I'm looking at what what's upstream. I'm interested in what is not at the point of incision, but upstream this way. And what I've done is I've just sort of color classed the range of uh, elevations. I've picked basically 40 meters elevation range and just used the colors to try to capture some of the relief that goes on in there. And what we see is that the chasm is actually at the end of a much larger hydraulic system and that hydraulic system has a long esker in it so there's an esker and you can see parts of the esker there there through here leading into the chasm and the areas flanking the chasm are also really eroded and there's a lot of scabland like topography of remnants and dissection all along it the esker sits in um, what we've called the tunnel valley and that's really what it is often the term that some people use for these are meltwater corridors that's another term that you see sometimes but they're they're really just the same thing by different two different names but this is a tunnel valley and um, the esker sits in it how do we know it's a tunnel valley how do we know if it's a tunnel, a tunnel let's back up if we call it a tunnel valley what does it imply about its formation what's that was formed under ice how do we know that that is not, if it doesn't do that uphill profile which this one doesn't happen to do 
How do we know that it was formed under ice? Why isn't it just a regular river channel that is now dry? What's the clue that there's an esker in it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Good. So the esker, which we can confidently ascribe to an R channel fill, sits inside a channel or a larger conduit that we'll call a tunnel valley. So the understanding or the recognition of the esker allows us to say that the channel it sits in could well be used as a tunnel valley. All of this is dry today though, right? There's no water going through there, there's no stream. It's just not like we're reutilizing re a, a river system. There is no major drainage off this surface. This is all conditioned and used during glaciation. And used, in this case, subglacially. When you have that combo of the esker sitting inside of a channel, that leaves little doubt as to the, uh, the origin of the water and the flow through there. That association, Esker Tunnel Valley, is something we'll revisit in the term because we it's a very common association. And we'll also see that um, different shapes of eskers lead us to under, different understandings of the conditions of flow. So we, remember we said that in our channel we might get these arcuate eskers. Sometimes we get a flat-topped esker, and that's just a function of the esker fill, f forming in a conduit that is not under pressure. Could be at atmospheric pressure and so it behaves a bit like a river so it's the, the top is flat and some parts of this esker system have flat bits some are curved so we may well be looking at a system that's sometimes under pressure sometimes depressurized and back again under pressure but most likely it's under ice when it's forming so the intriguing thing is here's evidence of flow of water in conduits subglacially and that happens just upstream just an hour's drive upstream about 60 kilometers uh, and drains into the chasm drains into where's my other vm that's what i'll do chasm drains into this valley which connects south into the lake basin and at ashcroft at ashcroft here which is where this this valley that you follow the chasms up here, you come down and you enter the lake basin. At Ashcroft, at the point where it enters, there happens to be an enormous fan of sediment. It's not a delta. It doesn't have that Gilbert delta architecture of the top set, four set, bottom set. It's what has been interpreted as a subaqueous fan, which is um, obviously a big depositional landform of sediment, but it's one that is where the sediment is deposited and directed under the water surface for the duration of the, the buildup. It never sort of builds up to the top of the water, like a delta does, as we said, you know, the top set really extension of the, the river system. In a subaqueous fan, it's not the case. Now, why does it build that instead of a delta? There's a bunch of different reasons. Um, sometimes it's just the geometry of the, the valley that the sediment is moving through, and it enters a lake basin quite deep in the basin just because the sediment's following the topography. So if you've already got a reason or a channel that you can follow, then you might start building a subaqueous fan. But some of the best examples of subaqueous fans have been built in lakes or in, glace in contact with uh, ice, so basins of water in contact with ice, where the esker and the R channel exit directly into the lake. So you can picture a a cliff of ice, a lake in contact with that, and our channels at the base of the ice that go right into the lake. So we don't have a we don't have an outwash surface in between the two. We go straight from some glacial to lacustrine or marine, as the case may be, but into the water into the lake basin or the, the water body. And then we build, in these cases, we build subaqueous fans. So the chasm is interesting for a bunch of these reasons, including the fact that I mean, is it possible that this lake in fact has ice near it? and that maybe there is part of the lake in contact with ice and we're just funneling water under the ice to the point where it enters the lake? I suppose, I mean, that's not a, it's a hard argument to make just based on these, on the deposits here and linking that to the chasm itself, but it, it, it probably speaks to just sort of how complex the, the hydrology of the ice sheet as it's retreating, but also during glaciation might be in terms of utilizing valleys to funnel flow of water and funnel sediment and then uh, 
reworking some of that material into the lake basins. Kind of like the way we were discussing reworking till into outwash and then into sands and silts that end up in the lake basin. Uh, okay, does that make sense? This was just a, an excuse to talk about the chasm and see an esker, but um, what's that? Yeah, go for it. Climb up if you want. Yeah, there we go. There's really good short, small eskers in the VIU woodlot in Nanaimo. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. When you walk to Ammonite Falls from, is it Jameson? Jameson Road? You're walking on eskers some of the way. <laughs> yes, you have. Cool. When you leave the when you leave the road, the logging road, and you go into the trails, and you kind of go up a bunch of humps, yeah. those are eskers. Okay. Well, I didn't find any ammonites either, so I'll have to go back. <laughs> so there we go. We were just talking about that applies to the valley somewhere. Like, is that here, or is that like in a different? Place? The chasm, you mean? Yeah. No, that's way up in the in the Thompson. Okay. It's I'll show you where it is. It's way up in the. In the other lake, so we're down here, right? right? We're up here. We're talking about this lake oh, system here okay. in the top, Kamloops, Ashcroft, Cache Creek area. Okay. And it's this valley that builds into the, the sub big. Yeah. It's not actually the Thompson, it's, I can't remember the name of this one. It's an unlabeled offshoot. offshoot. Yeah, it goes north into the chasm. So the chasm geographically is like up here. And there's a valley that continuously goes into right. the lake basin. You basically plug up the tunnel. You jam pack all these river stones into the tunnel. And what's the last part of the story? The ice melts away. And so you're left with the tunnel fill. The glacier itself is gone. And the river is gone. And the flowing water is gone. Walking on an Ice Age Esker. Looking back to Kelowna, the town of Kelowna and Okanagan Lake. I think it's still Okanagan Lake. I'm walking or looking southwest. Yeah. I'd give you a bunch of landmarks, but I don't know them. I can't even remember the name of the, the funky layered, layer cake mountain or oh, what did Jerome say? I don't remember. That's what the backside of it looks like. You're looking south. Okanagan Lake. The city of Kelowna. Now we're sweeping to the north. Esker in the low country, bedrock in the high country. There's a lot of really amazing geology here. Understatement of the year. You're a long way from home. Yeah. <laughs> 
interesting trying to imagine what the ghosts are like protecting would be like. Yes. How high up it actually would be. Exactly, right. You know, can you see any of those deltas? That is pretty subtle from here, I suppose, huh? Yeah. Uh, he was saying before, if down there was still above it, then I think it would still cover the flatland down there for sure, but mm -hmm. I don't know if it would get up to here or mm -hmm. even down to the orchard down there. Over there, that's floating because it's too deep right there. I thought, yeah, I thought I heard him say that. That was really interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, for how skinny it is. That's right. Shocking what a trough that must be. Do I have my bearings right? We camped around the corner. That's the, that's yeah. the point that, yeah, where the right. lake got real skinny. Yeah. So he was, wasn't he talking about grooves in that ridge going out to that point where there's, I guess, water crossing or ice crossing or some, some kind of notches, I think, cut into that ridge? Yeah. I think I remember him saying that. Just, just kind of that profile that oh, right, yeah. it's irregular because they've measured the elevation of those notches at the top of that. and. Well, I'm with you now. I'm not sure if that was ever under lake water or not. Maybe it wasn't. Yeah. Glad you came over here. Good view. Thank you.